the citation says for uh, fundamental algorithmic contributions to high-level synthesis of uh, field programmable gate arrays, or FPGAs in short. Uh, maybe I should just quickly mention how the FPGA design or circuit design was done in general. And uh, in about a, a decade ago, the predominant way is to write uh, VHDL or Verilog, these specialized hardware description languages to describe the circuit operation cycle by cycle. And it's tedious and error pruning and also really slow down the productivity. So in about uh, 10, uh, 15 years ago, around uh, 2002, we started the research program, um, so-called high-level synthesis, where you can just write C, C++ programs. Most of the software people are familiar with. We can synthesize that automatically uh, to the uh, VSI circuits uh, with emphasis on actually on FPGAs. Um, I don't take credit for being the first doing that. In fact, uh, there's a, a, a number of uh, research institutions such as CMU, uh, the IBM, IMAC, uh, also including industry, right, that the uh, synopsis um, uh, Stanford, Berkeley, and the UC Irvine, they all have done work in that area. Um, for one reason or another, those has not been widely adopted. So now our research really uh, led to actually uh, a spin-off company called Auto ESL that from UCLA later on was acquired by Xilinx in 2011. And that leads to a, a very widely, uh, very popular uh, high-level synthesis tool called the Vivado HLS. And that's widely used in the industry today. Field programmable gate array technology has fundamentally changed how we build hardware. It allows different kinds of hardware that can be reconfigured in the field. But there were many challenges to building these kinds of systems, and Jason Kong is really the pioneer in solving many of these challenges. My background at uh, research emphasis was not in high-level synthesis, I've been doing a lot on physical synthesis, a logic synthesis, basically how do you place and route these uh, millions of logic gates and how do you come up with the proper logic uh, expressions right? That, uh, of that. Uh, the reason we get in really um, for sort of a two significant events, one is uh, towards the uh, end of the uh, um, 1990s, it was quite clear that the wiring delays or the communication delays between elements, even on this tiny one millimeter by one millimeter chip, is actually slower than the computation delay, right? So that's a fundamental shift. So what we want to do is actually to come up with a behavior like, uh, like a description. That's actually what we do in C, C++, like a programming language. We just specify what we want to compute. We do not specify which clock cycle we do what computation, right? From there, actually, I can start synthesizing it to a uh, different cycle accurate representations so that I can tolerate this very long wiring delays. So that's really what was motivation number one. Uh, this is actually the part uh, I enjoy most of the doing research is, uh, it, I mean, uh, you have uh, the, the process is full of surprises as you go. And on this particular project, I think that the uh, two things probably uh, surprised me the most. One is the one we started the project, as I said, that we very much focus on how do we uh, schedule uh, computation and communication and uh, for the best efficiency, right? It turned out, actually, the memory becomes a big part of that, that as we go. Uh, what happened is that uh, on these FPGAs, and uh, they are uh, prefabricated. You can program in your office, on your desk, and uh, all the resources are there. They have the programmability uh, uh, built in. Uh, for example, all their memory systems, all of them have either single port or two ports of memories. That turned out to be a, a big, you can say the barrier or complication to deal with that. So although our research started with uh, computation, communication, a fair amount of effort was directed to how do we make use of these uh, large number of uh, embedded memories very efficiently. And uh, in fact, we get a multiple uh, best paper award related to, for example, how do you partition the memory Right, that uh, um, uh, very efficiently, how do you schedule, prefetch? You know, there's a number of work in that area. The second thing is that uh, after um, Zadings acquisition, they rolled out this tool, Vivado HLS. I was really impressed how fast people 
kind of embrace this kind of a new technology. Uh, even that uh, back in the, uh, the UCLA spin-off Auto ESL, we have uh, probably um, a dozen or two dozens of customers uh, many of them actually um, uh, leading edge uh, information technology companies like uh, Qualcomm, Broadcom, uh, Intel, uh, National Instruments, uh, of course Zadings was uh, also a, a user of that. But uh, since uh, the Zadings acquisition, this uh, adoption really uh, kind of uh, increased very dramatically just before coming here I did the Google Scholar search, there's already over a thousand papers citing the tool and uh, from my friends at Zadings, there's uh, uh, many more in the industry actually using that. And the most commonly used uh, application in this area is uh, uh, using high-level sensors so far has been uh, DSPs, digital signal processing, uh, multimedia applications, a lot of them related to image processing, uh, vision. Um, but there's areas that, uh, that uh, applications from all areas. I remember reading papers that the words being cited it was using for industry control, right? You can describe your uh, kind of uh, control programs in a, uh, a high-level description and then compiled into a circuit. Uh, my Zadings friend also showed me that uh, the use of that uh, for, uh, uh, for example, Memcached, that's actually used for the big data computation. So my group more recently has been using uh, this type of uh, uh, high-level synthesis tools to synthesize accelerators for bioinformatics applications for precision medicine where we can allow people to sequence uh, uh, align the genomes that are very quickly. Uh, the challenges in, in fact uh, are also the opportunities right as this tool being uh, more and more uh, adapted by a larger community you can see that uh, uh, C and C++ like a programming style is a lot closer um, to many of the computer scientists, engineers, uh, certainly has a much wider acceptance. But there's also a lot more domain experts out there, right? So that uh, um, they are not necessarily computer scientists, but uh, they use uh, a lot of uh, uh, computing capabilities. Just give you one example. About three, four years ago, we were working with uh, our colleagues in neuroscience. Uh, they want to simulate neural circuits. Uh, so it turned out these are the circuits uh, understand how the mammals uh, do navigation, localization. Um, if they run on standard processors, it uh, uh, takes uh, many hours and they want to do it at real time. Um, for them, start from C or C++, certainly it's a lot more convenient, but they would prefer to describe the application in a domain they are familiar with. For example, they have cells, uh, right, they have neurons and then have a population of a different neurons. So we actually come up with a language to help them to describe uh, their kind of a, a bio biological structure. And from there, we can compile into uh, our high-level synthesis tools and, uh, and then go down to the circuits, right? So I think that's probably going to be an important direction. Uh, please welcome Dr. Jason Kong. I like to work on the problems which are uh, intellectually challenging, right? Uh, for someone with a computer science training, so I enjoy uh, work both is on actually improve the computing efficiency and the handling the the, 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 the large complexity. A great honor for me, and uh, I'm really humbled with this uh, recognition. As I said, uh, um, there are actually many researchers that made the significant contributions to this. Uh, uh, the field of high-level synthesis. Uh, we're fortunate is actually making use of all the, um, the results and the, the, the progress um, available to us so far and then taking step forward right to making that being a, embody them in a very successful commercial tool and made an impact. Um, so I thank uh, IEEE Computer Society for giving me this uh, recognition. The, the, uh, the recognition actually goes to all the um, students and the postdocs who work in my group in this area. Uh, that's certainly including the first generation of students. And Drew Zhang right now is at Cornell, Yi Ping Fan is at Facebook, Jerry Jiang is at Google, and, uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, Guo Lin, uh, he's also at Google now. So, uh, and Bill Ming Chen is a faculty member at Illinois. Uh, there's actually many more uh, students and the postdocs that continue to work on this project. This award is an important milestone, but I don't think our mission has been completely 
uh, accomplished yet. So now our goal is to make sure everyone in the computer society will have a very easy ways to um, program FPGAs for uh, energy efficient computing in the cloud. Uh, so I will come back to report to the group uh, more progress in this area. Thank you so much. To go after big problems and with high impact, that's something that will come out of that. And the other one is that the knows the sort of a, uh, your own uh, potential and the strength and the leverage on that. So uh, as I said, in my case, that's always been enjoying that the, to deal with complexity, right? The, the, the large scale optimization, something that I really um, uh, enjoy and feel passionate about. So uh, make sure that as you work, you get, uh, you, you enjoy the work and have fun out of that. Thank you.